one teacher to come in there. Uh, we're going to be uh, going through the rest of the year with um, with very uh, not with the way we would normally do it. Uh, we've been asked to uh, take two hundred thousand dollars, and when your budget uh, is as lean as the budget in North Reading is, uh, you don't have a lot of opportunities to um, uh, to to make uh, make decisions here. And back uh, to, to Abby's questions about the special ed, I'm very worried about the special education. Uh, we have just received settlement on an out-of-district placement, uh, and I don't know where we're, we're truly going to get all the money to uh, to fund that. We had hoped that the circuit breaker uh, would help, as Carl said, would carry us over with uh, with additional money, and that's that's not going to be available to us. So we're making some very tough decisions. Um, what I'm committed to at this point, uh, unless uh, some of the dire predictions made by our state senators and representatives, and I heard that at the finance planning team, and I've heard it again repeated at superintendent's meetings, that there will be very likely another round of, of reductions probably <coughs> coming in January to this year's budget, and it's now, uh, there, I, I believe that local aid is not going to be immune from those reductions. And, um, so, two hundred thousand dollars may be looking for you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Dan Driscoll, Six Equestrian Drive. Uh, first of all, I just want to say uh, thanks for, for all your efforts. I know we're going through a uh, time uh, time like this, whether uh, it's government or business, it's uh, it's not an easy thing um, to make these types of decisions. Um, so, thanks for your, for your tireless effort. You know, it's probably an underappreciated job that you have. Um, Secondly, um, last year, over the last several years, uh, people on both sides of this table have worked uh, very, very hard to uh, get our schools um, back to uh, what I would refer to as a basic education. I think leading up to uh, this past year, um, our school, uh, the education in North Reading has been, has been sub-average. <coughs> All the things that we did over the last 18 months have, have got our education and our programs uh, back to what I would call average. I don't think we're extravagant by any stretch of the imagination. I think we have an average program. And I'm not talking about the teachers and the efforts that they put in and the administrators, because I think they do a phenomenal job with, uh, with the resources that we have. Um, so my point here is, <coughs> I know we have economic troubles. We have it at the state, we have it at the local level. Um, chairman put up uh, some, some figures that everybody can see. But we can't look ourselves in the mirror and say that our, the education for our kids, the basic education for our kids, should be driven off economics. You know, the, the fact that the economy is down shouldn't mean that our kids are going to be going back to school four and a half days instead of five days. You know, we have an average program. In, in, in the school department in North Reading. We can't be cutting any more than what we've already cut. We didn't restore all the cuts that we wanted to restore over the last couple of years. We've got them back to what, what I've said is just the basic level. We cannot, just because, just because the, um, some of the economic, uh, the revenues are down, or maybe the state aid is down a little bit, we cannot be cutting the education for our kids. The, Basic education should not be driven by economics. If you know, if we were buying two sets of textbooks, brand new textbooks every single year for the kids, going on field trips all the time, I'd say, okay, then maybe we have some things to cut. We're not there. We're not there at all. So I would think that we would be aggressively pursuing everything that Mr. Frisco and his team have come up with from the revenue side. Every single thing. You know, I, I admire all the things about the energy. I mean, there's a lot of money there. You can chuckle about the paper, but there's a ton of money that can be saved on, that, on the whole paper thing. We've got to be doing everything there, aggressively pursuing every single revenue idea before we start <coughs> even thinking about going back to the, uh, the sub, subliminal uh, education that we had over the last couple of years. So it was more of a general comment, but I, I just don't, I don't think we can sit here and say that we're going to cut education again, put our kids back to school four days instead of five. Thank you. Mrs. Mullis? Dr. Trace, can I just ask if you just reassure, you, you may have subs, but I'd, I'd like to think that 
on like the subs we had in our day. They just came in and, and sat and, and just watched us. I assume still be able to bring the subs because we either teachers <coughs> that would have the same type of curriculum that the other teacher had and still continue to do it in the five days or four of pregnancy. Like is that do like to assume that that's what would happen? Qualified well, people would need to run the classes? We're high, when we have a, a long-term sub, um, it, the practice in the past has been to offer that individual a contract if they're here for more than half the year. We're not doing that. We're, we're going out and, and offering um, an individual uh, the minimum pay uh, and with no guarantee, of, you know, no, no sick time. If you're not there, you don't, <coughs> you don't collect the paycheck. But people would qualify. I can't say that because uh, I, I, certainly uh, we're going to work to um, make sure that the individuals are um, certified and, and able to, to be in that classroom. But you have to remember that they're not getting the kind of support that somebody would be getting if they had started with us and, and moved through. Um, I may make some decisions uh, about, uh, particularly if it's at the middle school or, or the high school, of uh, redistributing classes. Uh, to um, pick up, and again, because of the, the way the high school is scheduled particularly, of the middle school, can I split, or have the principal split the classes around? Uh, it's a little more difficult to do that at the elementary level, but I'm looking very carefully at uh, class size, and, and if I thought that I could redistribute for a month or two, uh, 22, 25 children, uh, among other classes, I might consider that. It's, it would be difficult, given the fact that we have high class sizes to begin with in a number of areas of the elementary school. So we're, you know, we're looking, it is not business as usual. Where in the past it would be, I'm looking for the, uh, the best person, because I do believe putting your investment in, uh, in terms of the staff, teaching staff, and I believe we've done that, is the way to go. But I, I, we have to uh, step back and really look at that. Gentlemen. Sorry, is that you? Yes, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was something. <laughs> Two questions. You talked about new, new negotiations in regards to the GIC. Is there any information you can share with us tonight? Thank you. Well, it's, it's a collective bargaining issue. I can say that we are need next meeting is Wednesday. Wednesday. And there's one more meeting scheduled before the current December 1st deadline for moving to the GIC for this year. And for those that don't know, they extended the uh, uh, admission time from, I think it was uh, October 1st to December 1st. And I've heard some rumbling about them extending it beyond December 1st. I haven't been able to substantiate that. Maybe Mike can shake any heads. Now, from what I've heard, false. It looks like that's going to be the case. And uh, one of the looked like the top thing on the uh, governor's <coughs> legislative agenda was changing the percentage required. From 70 to 50. That's 50 plus one. 50 plus one. Which will you can take that with a grain of salt. I don't know. It could possibly change from now and January 1st. Yes, Mike. And my second question, Mr. Nelson, in your presentation, you talked about you are going to reevaluate building use. Uh, probably, I'm assuming, activities after the school. Are there any activities that you can mention now? I'll give you an example on the sports programs that you're thinking about not allowing to be used in schools any further. Should be aware of, so we can make sure we're all right. <coughs> it's a great question. I think we all understand that the school buildings are owned by the town. Therefore, they have a town-wide purpose. So, what we're trying to do is quantify the cost of keeping the buildings open at night. And I, I don't. Uh, I think we're. It's fair to say, Mr. Crisco, that we're beginning to examine what those costs are. Um, and the school committee has asked us to, the school, the school committee has asked the school administration to review all user fees across the board, uh, 
from uh, tuition costs to busing to athletics <coughs> to building use. So I would suspect that um, as we uh, prepare to issue the preliminary budget, um, it's our responsibility to provide the community an opportunity to look at the user fees. So that would be the manifestation of them. I think if it's determined that keeping the buildings open uh, is costing the school budget a lot of money, I, I suspect that, that we would be looking at adjusting the fees. Just, can I add to that? Just to add to that, what, what Carl Nelson said was that when, if we need to hire, move a custodian from a night shift and change that, to either part of the day or early evening, then there's not going to be a custodian here. So we would need to explore ways in which other outside users uh, would, uh, I suppose, bring in their own custodians uh, above and beyond what we currently have. They wouldn't be available. contract, you have to bring in custodians if the building's open, right? You couldn't allow, if it was rec programs, you couldn't allow recreation to be in charge of the building. Is that a contract issue with the uh, custodian staff? I don't, I don't believe it's a contractual issue. I, I think it's more of a policy issue, in, in my judgment. I would defer to others on the committee, but the buildings, uh, to have the buildings open without a custodian present, uh, these would be heating, emergencies, alarm, security, breakage, injuries. I, I would uh, suspect that our policy would be to want a school employee in the building whenever it's open. But I don't think it's a, it's a collective bargaining issue. It's more of a policy. This is Kathy. Um, if, if, I, if I may, I'd like to share some observations, if I could, first. And I actually have 13 suggestions as far as cost savings. Um, over the last several years, members of NRU or Stanford Children have shown up to just about every single Board of Selectmen or School Committee meeting that has existed. And one thing that we've certainly done is taken good notes, just as you watched us do again tonight. And we have worked in cooperation and with the spirit of partnership, education, and the spirit of progress. I don't think anyone in this room could deny that. However, I'm speaking for myself personally. I'm not speaking on behalf of Ben. I am extremely disappointed and more than frustrated and downright angry that we are sitting in this room tonight, and I'll tell you why. Over the last several months, I have witnessed personally some things that I find very discerning. And some words that people share with me are suspect, and a word that I'd rather not use, but I will, is incompetence, incompetencies. And I'll share those as well. If the GIC is to save this community more than 800 to a million dollars per year, my minimum expectation for every single person sitting in the front of this room and in back of me, in every appointed committee, would be that we explored every resource available in this community to put together the most comprehensive, ironclad, bulletproof, strategic plan ever put together in this community. I know for absolute certain that that did not happen. I did not expect in our second year for North Reading to win. I know only a handful of communities have joined the GIC, and I understand all the hurdles and the complications and the litigation that doesn't allow us to get there. <coughs> However, at a minimum, I would have expected every single person in this room to have input, dialogue, meetings, challenge each other, work together, appoint people, educate the community from the ground up, to make sure that every opportunity was explored for us to be successful. And I do not believe that happened. So I'm sorely disappointed that my children and, my, and I feel threatened again 
to start off next year with a one to two million dollar shortfall.